What is happening, everybody? I know it is crazy. This new year is upon us. I, if you look behind me, am in the process of getting ready to move over the next month or so. So my office is going to be getting turned out. But thanks for popping in, man. Um, I wanted today, one of the questions and one of the things I see so much is new EMTs, especially new EMTs, but also medics that are getting into uh, breath sounds, getting into heart sounds, asking what the best, best stethoscope is, okay? And I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that because not to give you a recommendation of what scope to buy, right? But when you think about it, when more important than anything else that we use in the field, right? Having a great stethoscope is pretty important, right? Blood pressures, we have the automatic cuffs and stuff like that. And, and you know, but there are times even the automatic cuffs don't work. You want to confirm your endotracheal uh, tube placement, right? So you need to use the right equipment so that you are successful when you are doing this. Okay, now, for me, one of the biggest things is choosing the right stethoscope to use, right? You want the right tool, you know, quote unquote, for the job, right? So you get those disposable ones, those cheap ones, you'll see people who will say, oh, I just used the cheap one, you know, and, and whatever. And you'll see those recommended, especially to students. But a lot of these have very poor sound, uh, uh, I guess, profiles, you would say. If you have young, you're a young person, maybe the cheap ones will be good enough, right? You've got nice young ears, you can hear really good, and those are good enough for you right, to get by. But if your hearing is less than perfect, or you need more options because you're doing listening for different sounds, you need a good scope. So using something like double lumen type scopes, which are the ones that have the two, the, the two tubes that go into the bell, like uh, I think Sprague is a bit most popular one, those can, can cause artifact a lot of times if those tubes rub together. Shorter tubes might give you more um, uh, uh, volume when it comes to the sound. But when you have a patient that's coughing and stuff like that, having a longer tube can be helpful as well. Now, you have two different parts of, of your scope as well, your the, the diaphragm, all right? Now, do you have uh, one side, which is of the head? I have a scope right here just to kind of show you a little bit, all right? This only has one side, one diaphragm. This Flipman has one side. But the diaphragm, a lot of times you have the ones that you can turn around, one has a solid disc. And these are great for breath sounds, for bowel sounds. But you're looking for low frequency things like heart, uh, heart, heart tones or murmurs. You want to get the one with a hollow uh, uh, side, okay? So whatever brand you choose, you, you got to keep in mind, you're going to get what you pay for. You get a Litman, it's an expensive scope, it's going to cost a little bit of money. But keep in mind, when you get this, you spend money on a Litman, you know, cardiology, you, you don't want to lose it, okay? So if you can't afford to lose it, just be careful. Don't go spending all that money on an expensive scope, okay? And with that said, when you do get that scope, it comes in the mail, you buy it at a store, whatever, Okay, um, keep in mind, sometimes the bells you have, it's not really a bell. It could just be a pediatric diaphragm. So when you turn it around, one for pediatrics and one for adults. So know your scope. When you get it, open it up, read the instructions, read the manual, know what the scope is about. Sometimes it's not as simple as, oh, one side is pediatric, one is adult. Sometimes it's because the bell is different for different types of sounds, right? And you want to know 
you know, how to hold it and, and understand how the earpiece is going. Sometimes these rubber deals here on the end aren't on when you get the scope. You might have a little package of these and find out which ones are going to be best for you. It's going to fit your ear. It's going to be, you know, the way you want it when you're listening. What's going to be the best um, uh, uh, results when you're using it? Okay, so know your scope. Read the owner's manual. Even visit the website. If you have a, a, something like Litman, go to their website and look at, at their scope. Believe it or not, they have a lot of resources. They probably even have YouTube channels you can check out as well, okay? And, you know, when you get your scope, guys, keep it clean. All right, don't let these things get clogged with, with uh, uh, you know, hair and dirt and God knows what else. It's in your pocket. It's around your neck. It's on the, the dashboard of the ambulance, right? Clean it after every, after every patient, okay? You know, these can be full of diseases which can transmit to you and to the next patient. Disinfect it after every patient. Just real quick, just to make sure you keep it clean, okay? And... If for some reason you're using using your stethoscope, everything's going fine, no problems, and then suddenly you can't hear anything, okay? Make sure that your head, if you have one of the ones that, that pivot, it's turned the right way. Sometimes it will be off just a little bit, and it's blocking all the sound. You can't hear anything. So check to make sure that that is right. Make sure your diaphragm is not cracked, all right? Sometimes the diaphragm can get cracked as well. The rings can be loose, all right? Guys, this is a piece of equipment like anything else. You know, yeah, I've taken this thing. I've thrown it on the dashboard. I've thrown it on the, the, the bench of the ambulance, right? But you want to make sure that you take care of it, all right? If it ends up breaking, you can get replacement parts for it. You can you can change, you know, the diaphragm out if you need to. If it just gets cracked, it doesn't mean the whole scope gets thrown away, all right? But if for some reason you're not hearing well, look at those things. Double check and make sure that's what's going on. Now. You want to make sure that you're using a good auscultation method, all right? Um, and one of those things that you can do, one of the things you have to do is making sure the earpieces are in the right position. Okay, I'm going to put this on. While I'm doing that, do me a favor. Hit the like button if you're finding out this is helping you at all. This makes some sense. May bring things to clarity. Hit that like button for me. Let me know that you're. It, this is helping you a little bit. Even comment if you want, okay? So you want to move these earpieces into position. So what you want them to do is be angled slightly forward, okay, toward your, toward your nose, okay, so that they are in line with the um, – with your ear canals, okay? So you put them in like this, and now you've got a good seal, and you're able to, you know, listen to what's happening with the patient. You're getting the best um, pressure in your ears to be able to hear, okay? And it's very important, guys, when you take the blood pressure, put this over the brachial artery, okay? Don't just put it wherever you think it's going to be. You want to do the right way, all right? So many people would take this and put it over clothes, you know, not make contact with the patient's skin, not put it in the right place when it comes to uh, uh, the, the patient's artery, all right? It's all important, all right? This thing isn't just something you just slap on, take a blood pressure half ass, and then that's what you get, all right? Make sure you're doing the right, doing it the right way, using it the right way. There's a process involved, okay? Um, I actually did a, a video a little while ago on actually taking blood pressures, all right? How to position the patient's arm, how to position yourself, things like that. Go back and watch that video if you can. Um, once you have this in place, guys, try not to put your thumb, okay, on this to hold it. It can cause artifact, all right? Try to cradle it with your finger. I don't know if you can see this or not. Cradle it with your fingers, all right? And keep your thumb at the base of the cord, all right? And if you can, over the back of your hand even. This is going to minimize that uh, artifact, additional sounds. If you get a scope, you have a scope right now even, just try it on yourself. If you put it here, just lightly tapping this thing is going to give you artifact. All right. So keep that in mind. And like I said before, don't take it over close. Make contact with the patient's skin. All right. Don't let clothing block your 
uh, your lung sound. Don't let clothing block your blood pressure. Okay, and learn some of the tricks. All right, when you're taking, I talked again. I talked about this in a blood pressure uh, taking blood pressure uh, video I did a little while ago. When you're taking it, don't let the patient stretch the arm rest on the on the, the stretcher railing. Okay, vibrations as the ambulance is going down the road. Okay, is going to travel through the patient and it's going to add to what you're hearing. All right. Um, Put your feet on the stretcher and turn on the floor as well so that there's few vibration passing through you even, okay? Sometimes just lifting, you know, putting your uh, uh, tippy toes instead of putting on those, just kind of raising your feet a little bit is enough to prevent that uh, artifact from happening as well, all right? If sometimes you're going to have to wait until the ambulance stops to get a good blood pressure, all right? Um, and sometimes when it, it's hard to to hear lung sounds, all right? Listen in the axillary region if you have to, all right? And put the patient's arm down over the cystoscope. So when you listen to the lung sounds, instead of you going like this, have the patient put their arm down over it, okay? And that'll help block some of the ambient noise as well, all right? Guys, this is just some things to think about when you're getting a cystoscope. It's not just about using a expensive scope sometimes it's about your technique how you're using it what you're using it for and what you're trying to accomplish are you listening to lung sounds heart sounds blood pressures okay it's all going to matter so keep this in mind when you're choosing which one you are going to use i suggest you get litmans i like litmans i've used them before never had a problem with it i again they are a little expensive but think of it as an investment in your skills in what you're doing with your patients and investment even in the patients you're taking care of you're going to be able to hear those blood pressures and hear those lung sounds much much clearer okay and guys not really um about the actual scope itself but try to be honest all right don't lie about the patient's blood pressure if you can't hear it all right don't be afraid to say you couldn't hear it when you're attempting to listen okay again you're a new EMT, just getting into this stuff. It's tempting to say 120 over 80 when the patient looks good, right? Maybe the patient looks perfect to you. You say 120 over 80. Don't do that stuff, okay? If you can't hear it, say you can't hear it. Don't be afraid to ask your partner or somebody else to listen to lung sounds to confirm what, you, what you're hearing, all right? Or to take the blood pressure again to confirm what you're getting, all right? Because you're gonna get more respect by doing that than lying about what you're hearing, whether it's a blood pressure or lung sound or whatever, all right? And listen, I've been there. I've been a new EMT, been a new medic. It's tempting to do that. When I found the courage, I guess you will, to turn to my partner and ask them to listen, all right? I've asked preceptors when I was in paramedic school and I've said, I don't really, I'm not really sure. I think I hear this and make, have them listen. Not only does that give you the ability that you're not lying, right? But it also uh, confirms what you're listening to. So if they listen, they get the same, they hear the same thing. Now you know what you're listening for. Maybe you've never heard Weezing before. Maybe you've never heard Ronkai before. You saying to you, know, I think it's Ronkar, I think it's I think it's Ronkai, I think it's wheezing, I think it's uh 200 over 100, right? You doing that and having somebody confirm that for you, it's going to carry with you throughout EMS. You're always going to know what that sound is, okay? You're not going to question it as much going forward. And listen, if you can't hear the blood pressure, try to palpate it, okay? It's much better having a very good palpated systolic BP than having some crazy blood pressure you make up because you weren't sure because it was artifact going on. Okay. Keep that in mind, guys. All right. And of course, you know, if, if you really have big problems and you can't hear stuff like that, maybe you got to get your hearing checked. Doesn't help if you're having a problem, you really having issues. Um, hearing what's going on with the patient's lung sound, the patient's blood pressure, doesn't hurt to get that done if, if it's starting to become a big issue. One thing I'm going to mention, this is a little pet peeve of mine. 
when you're listening to the patient, maybe these are my ear because I want to talk to you. And you have this on the patient song. Patients who want to be slick I mean they want to lie because they think somehow that's going to throw you off. They'll start doing this stuff with their finger. If you put your scope in your ears like this, you put this over your arm, you start doing that, you're going to sound, you're going to hear it. Okay? The flick in your finger. It's going to sound like you listen to the blood pressure. You got to make sure you got to monitor everything. If your patient's doing that, they're moving their arm. Sometimes they do it out of nerves, but if they're doing it and they're clicking their, their finger, or they're tapping, tapping the stretcher rail or tra- tapping their leg while you're taking the blood pressure, kindly tell them to stop because it's going to throw you off. You're going to think you're hearing something that's either, you know, 200 over something or whatever, and it's not going to be the case. Okay, guys, just some tips. I know this is a little bit of a longer episode today, but I wanted to get in this thing about stethoscopes and kind of give some pointers when you're trying to decide what it is that you want to purchase and what you think is going to be most beneficial to you. Because it's not that I, like I said, I like the Lippmann scopes, but other scopes work fine as well. The point is, you've got to use some of the tips and techniques that I mentioned. Because that's going to be, I think, what's really going to uh, uh, benefit you the most, right? Knowing how to use it. Simply just getting a scope and just reading the manufacturer's uh, uh, manual, visiting their website, looking at some of their YouTube videos and how they use SS scopes, that is going to help you immensely when it comes to using that piece of equipment, okay? Because then all the other things that I mentioned about what side of the bell to use, um, avoiding artifact and stuff like that is going to be much easier. It's going to make more sense to you no matter what scope you use. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there because I'm going about 17 minutes, which is way longer than I want to go. But I want to thank you for joining me, guys. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know this is making some sense. Maybe I brought some tips today, kind of pointed some things out that made sense to you that's going to help you when you're using that stethoscope next time you're taking that next blood pressure. Don't forget, you can get a free insider membership at TurboMedic. Just go to myturbomedic.com, sign up for a free insider membership, and I will see you in the members area. All right, that's it, guys. As always, Jim Hoffman from emsstudio.com. Stay safe.